All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Diane Strand, who is up in Temecula, which is just up the road and equally sunny, probably even sunnier, be warmer up in Temecula. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's pretty warm today. Although, uh, isn't today eclipse day? So <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. I well, uh, yeah, eclipse. I I missed it. So anyway, it's uh, <laughs> all these people running around with their with their funny glasses. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Diane's an award-winning executive producer at JDS Studios and the TV show Spirit of Innovation, the first Riverside County local news and information program. Majority owner of JDS Video and Media Productions. Uh, and you are the best-selling author on entrepreneurship and breaking into the industry as an actor. You provide pathways for creative opp career opportunities in visual, performing, and digital arts. And your passion for workforce development in arts led you to write two approved, um, uh, approved apprenticeship programs for college graduates. And uh, you have, uh, in your prior career life, hold credits from A-list shows like General Hospital, Friends, Veronica's Closets, and Building the High Def Control Room at the Staples Centers. For And the last 17 years, you've been a successful entrepreneur, multi-award winning production company, and works with clients like Abbott, City of Temecula, Cal State Marcus, and United Healthcare. Okay, and you've launched over 100 video and, act, uh, and acting careers in mainstream ed entertainment. So... Um, I guess you have no spare time, I would say, right? <laughs> that's pretty true. I don't have a lot of spare time, but I love what I do. And that's part of my my message is if you're working your passion, your purpose comes through, you know, it's never a bad day at work. <laughs> right. And you uh, and you set out every day to provide hope, which is helping one person every day. And so anyway, today we're going to talk about marketing, leveraging and scaling. You see creative needs more business and business needs more creativity. I guess, Diane, you've probably had a front row seat to this, seeing how what was once the the uh, domain of entertainment and popular culture and all of that kind of coming into all aspects of business today because i mean we you see like from visual and marketing and all of that kind of stuff is there's a they're a lot closer than probably they once were do you remember once upon a time there was like corporate stuff and then there was entertainment stuff now things just seem to have bled over into each other is that fair and that's very fair. Um, you know, I have the the true passion behind the fact that the arts touch every industry. You have to have the creativity. And when you're marketing and you're scaling, if you're not being original and creative and putting information out there, you're never going to be able to target your audience. You're, you need to be able to leverage what it is you have going on in your business by cre creating content around that and then be able to scale that, to be able to move that. And the arts allows you to do it. It is a very different kind of marketing world than it was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. But in today's world, in social media and the way content comes out, you have to put that creativity in there. Yeah, and I guess so. Um, that's a, an opportunity and a challenge too, isn't it? Because I mean, it's an opportunity because you can present your message and and get to people in a different way. And you've now got so many different platforms you can you can reach people on. But also, then you have to be careful that it actually fits with who you are too. Because I see a lot of people who have now and other companies have now kind of grabbed onto it and they say, okay, we need to be really hip and this and that and everything. And it just, it grates, right? It just grates. There's just, there's no synergy between who they are and what they're trying to project. Well, that's where authenticity comes into play. Mm -hmm. You have to have that authenticity to who you are, what you do, the people you serve. You have to talk to the people you serve. Don't try and be everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, talk to your audience, be real, be who you are. And that's how your message is going to resonate. That's how you're going to be able to um, bring them into your world. You know, I, I believe that also you need to build your own brand. You need to have some sort of personal brand because today we do business with people we know, like, and trust. So we have to be out there and being that person that people can get to know. They have to be able to like you and connect with you and find some sort of 
way that they can bond with you so that they can start building that trust and then that relationship comes out of it, especially if you're looking for someone to market or to brand your business. No one's going to love your business as much as you love your business. So Mm -hmm. if you're working with somebody else, you have to be able to convey that to them so that they can love your business too and start sharing that. And then you need to also have your personal brand, your journey, how you got there. That is really a lot in today's marketing is sharing that from the perspective of this is how I did it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't as easy as maybe it always seems or looks on social media, because we all have ups and downs and little trials and tribulations. And when we can connect with someone because they can go, oh, yeah, I can identify with that. That's how we can bring them into our world. And we can then start building that relationship and that trust. And then they're going to buy from us or work with us or be able to use our products or whatever it is we're trying to convey to our audience. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point because uh, let's face it with social media and other things. I mean, sometimes things look like it's a very linear path. You know, you just do A, B and C and that's what they like to present <laughs> to A, B and C and it'll all happen for you overnight. When the reality is success is a, is often a meandering, you know, path full of one path leads nowhere and you got to retrace your steps and go up another path. And that's the reality. And I think that's where the authenticity comes because that's where the enthusiasm really comes from at the end of the day is having a lived experience and having gone through these things and being able to share with somebody as opposed to just going, just follow my three steps and everything will work out for you. Well, there isn't, especially, you know, I come from a creative industry. I work uh, a lot in the entertainment industry and a lot of people who come to me, they're trying to figure out how to break into the industry. How do I be an actor, a director, a producer, a writer, all of those kinds of things. So when they're coming to me and looking for that, there is no clear path. I can't say do one, two, three, and it's going to happen for you. So we talk about how they can build their brand, how they can put themselves out there, the ways to create the content around that. And I would say that is exactly the same, whether you're selling widgets Mm -hmm. and gizmos, you have to create the energy around that widget and gizmo. And why would somebody want it? And if I can buy a screw from you and a screw from the next guy, why am I coming to you for that piece of material. I have to be able to trust you, like you. It has to be a brand that I can trust. And as we're going into it, you know, cancel culture has become a huge thing in our in our world. So you have to put your authenticity self out there because people are going to want to work with you because they like you, because they can believe in you, because they know what you stand for. They know who you are. So that is a great way to start bringing people into your orbit who may want to buy, whether you're selling a service or a product, they want to connect with someone because people want to feel proud and say, well, I went to this company and not have everyone go, oh, you work with that person, right? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. yeah. And and, I mean, you're so right about the, about the enthusiasm and the authenticity and the belief because i mean how often have you dealt with somebody who's selling you something and they're saying all these words they're saying like this is the greatest i'm really excited about this and you're kind of looking at them and thinking well maybe you should tell your face because it's not it's not (laughs) jiving for me (laughs) absolutely yeah you know that's why you know I, i think that that's one of the best things that is starting to develop out of the social media world is you know we're done with looking at what people had for dinner. You know, mm-hmm. I want to know how it is that you had the money to pay for dinner yes. more so than what you ate, you know? So how are you going about your journey? Um, it's so inspirational. I, I, it doesn't matter if you're listening to someone talk about their journey that is in the same industry as you or not, because we're all humans and yes. that's how we are making our way through every day. We all have challenges and barriers that, Um, may impede us from moving to that next step. And when we can start to bring people around us that can help us break down barriers, create pathways. I mean, that's what I do for a living is 
show people the way to be able to allow them to hit their purpose and their passion. So I think that that is one of the most important things is, you know, put yourself out there for who you are, what mm -hmm. you're doing, what your goals are. And when you start sharing that with people, people are going to start walking the same pathway that you are starting to to be the paved way or for. Yeah. And like you said, the important part is that whole is being who you really are. And maybe who you are is maybe you're a quietly determined person. Maybe you're a thoughtful person. You think, you know, so, and you think, well, that doesn't, you know, on social media or on LinkedIn, everything, I need to be like upbeat and I need to be in your face. And you think, okay, no, you need to just be yourself and have the substance. Because at the end of the day, I think, after COVID, after all of that stuff and the, the social media being like infecting everything is we're I think people are finally looking for substance and they're realizing that I don't want filters on things. I want some substance. Absolutely. It really is. That's why, you know, I always go back to and they're like, well, what do I talk about and what do I share? It, it's talk about where you've been. Remember, everybody's journey is different. Mm -hmm. Success looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. We, you know, you can't compare your chapter one to somebody's chapter 20. Yeah. You have to then just see it for what it is. And I think as we continue to be our true authentic selves and put ourselves out there people are going to get to know us and then they will start to want what it is that you have to offer and i see that all over social media i see it working it works for us in our business it works for those that are you know who are trying to break into an industry you know it doesn't matter what industry it is you have to start you know, living that life and sharing in that product or that environment to make it start making sense for you. And then you can start sharing that with other people so they can come along for the ride with you. No, absolutely. And and obviously be yourself because as my compatriot Oscar Wilde said, be yourself because everyone else is taken. Um, so that's <laughs> a, it's a good piece of advice because there's too many people trying to be other people. You need to be yourself. Yes. Well, and it's true. Every, you know, go with your originality. You know, I have to say that took a lot of pressure off of me, you know, several years back when it was like, all of a sudden, just be me. People want to know me for who I am and for the things that I have done. And if I keep trying to always put that, you know, that perfect self out yeah. there and it's not real and people it's okay. You know, I, I always say you're either winning or you're learning. There okay. is no, you know, there is no losing because, and that lesson is going to take you further and give you more than the win really ever did. The win you relish in for a moment or a day, and then you got to get right back into it because, hey, we're all win junkies, so we yeah. have to keep going for the next win. But you really tend to learn the most from those that maybe weren't the biggest successes mm -hmm. in your life, because that's how we can then get better and do better is because we've learned something and you got to create that momentum. You know, not every day is rainbows and unicorns. Mm -hmm. We all have challenges and, and life happens. And so you have to be able to look at it with these different perspectives. So you can't let the one, you know, little, you know, boomerang knockdown, totally throw you for a loop. You have to get back up and brush yourself up and get out of that comfort zone and keep building that momentum to keep moving the needle in your business. Yeah. And and I guess um, part of that too is figuring out, you know, as you build your brand and as you build, uh, as you put yourself out there is like, is figuring out what are the things that trigger you? So what are the things and I, I don't mean it in the popular what I mean it in literally what are the things that inside your whole experience that when somebody says something in a particular way to you that somehow it you lose all focus on what you're doing and you go somewhere else uh, you have to figure out those things too so that as you put yourself out there more you're not going to allow you know things from your past derail you well, yeah, we all have a past. We all have baggage and sometimes it rears its, you know, it rears its head. But, you know, if you stay consistent, you know, and, you know, I always say, you know, it, it's a discipline that you have to create, you know, motivation is wonderful, but we're not motivated every day. But mm -hmm. if we have discipline, 
we are doing the things we need to do every day to keep that momentum going until the motivation comes back. Um, you know, and you also have to know when to pivot sometimes. You know, there are legitimate reasons that you may need to pivot and go in another direction and and see what those things and different opportunities may mm -hmm. bring to you. You know, I'm one that believes you show up, you say yes, and until you know you've worked its course, yeah. you, you keep you keep with it, but you may need to shift it. And if you shift it, that's okay. And then you keep working it till it has to shift again. Yeah, and I think that, and I think that I mean, part of that is the is the that we're so sometimes folks. I I I've, I was reading this book by sixteenth uh, century samurai swordmaster the other day, right, and. Uh, and one of the things that really stuck with me was was one of the the things was that if you, um, you know, if you are so focused on the destination, it, he basically said, if you have one eye fixed on the destination, then you only have one eye available to find the way. And I think we spend too little time on appreciating the journey and the lessons that the journey is and the, uh, is teaching us and the experiences we're having because we're always thinking we have to get to this point as fast as possible. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I truly believe that, that, you know, I'm a manifester, so I yeah. get the, you know, looking at what sure. it should look like at the end. Um, but that doesn't mean that I know all the steps of how to get from where I am now to where I need to get at the end. So you need to pull it back and let those steps reveal itself. The how always reveals itself. You take one step and that next step starts to materialize and come. And then I know what I want it to look like at the end. And, you know, it may look different. And that's the thing that I have to be open to is what I thought I wanted it to look like may look different once I get there. And it usually always does. And it's usually always better than mm -hmm. the way that I originally had manifested. But in some way, that happened. You know, for example, I wanted to start speaking on entrepreneurship and start teaching more about that. I didn't know what that was going to look like. I had been doing a little bit of it. I had been obviously doing podcasts and doing some of that. And then all I said, you know, I put it out there. I'd like to speak more and I would like to teach on entrepreneurship. And lo and behold, like two days later into my inbox was an RFP to write to start working for the Entrepreneurial Resource Center. That mm -hmm. took several revisions of an RFP, having to get certain things in place. And then next thing you know, now I am teaching, you know, a four week class at the Entrepreneurial Resource Center. Did I know exactly what that looked like or where it would be or how it would be or what would happen? No, but it did. You have to put it out there. You have to start working towards it. And those things start to materialize themselves. But if you keep it all inside, you don't put it out there on social media. You don't share it with somebody else. You don't start working towards those things. Then you get a little lost in your journey. But once you start taking those next steps that keep popping up in front of you, you know, when opportunity knocks, you have to answer that door. No, 100%. And what I like about what you just said there, too, is the whole idea of where it may look completely different. It may look similar. It may, it may look absolutely nothing like what you imagined it to. But being open to the outcome maybe being different, maybe being better, or you may get there and go, wow, this is what it is. I don't really want this. I mean, whichever yeah. thing, as long as you're open to it. Absolutely. That, I mean, that's what it really is. And that's why we all have different journeys of how we got to where it is that we are. I mean, if you would have asked me, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, whenever, I would never see where I am right now. This was, you know, not in that that grand plan. But now that I look back, because you can't connect your dots looking sure. forward, you have to look back. I am exactly where my dots have led me to be. And there would be no other place for me to be, but exactly where I am. And it's funny because I even say that, you know, I started, you know, 35 years ago, I was an actor and I started with trying to break into the industry as an actor. And then 
found my way, successful producing career, all these different things. But here I am, I have found my way to a different stage. I do podcasts. I speak in front of audiences of a thousand people talking on entrepreneurship. I teach it. I do all these things. It's just a different stage, but mm -hmm. I'm still up there doing exactly what it is that I want to be doing and enjoying every moment of it. But that's not ever where I thought I would be 35 years ago when I said I wanted to be an actor, but this is my true passion and yeah. it's makes complete sense now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a great point of there, Diane, is, uh, is, uh, is recognizing your success. And I think that's unfortunately, I I've, I've had this conversation with a number of people, like, especially people who don't think that they have achieved anything. Like I've helped people with resumes and stuff, you know, and they think, Oh, I've gone. And I go back with them and I say, look, and then I go, wow, look at what you've done, look what you've achieved, look what you've overcome, look how much resilience you've had. And instead they're looking at it like this didn't work and then I collapse. but I said, but you're here and you're still moving forward. That's a great story. You just got to learn how to tell that story. Absolutely. That's what it's really all about, sharing your story and then figuring out what your next steps are mm -hmm. and where you want to go. And even if you don't know, just keeping it positive, moving that needle a little bit more, um, networking, uh, you know, you got to get out from behind yeah. your desk. Yeah. Um, you can't do it all online. Everything is not social media. You have to do a little bit of everything. You know, I, I have found that the best things for my business has been being involved in my community. The mm -hmm. more I do for my community, the more my community turns around and does for me. And, you know, if you look at it that way, I mean, we just had our big, chamber gala this past weekend and you know it was an honor our, our nonprofit was nominated for a nonprofit of the year and just going around and it's interesting now that you know I've been doing this you know we were talking how nice it was in a room of 900 people to hear cheers from across the room for our business and doing things and that's because I'm out there in the community yeah. People get to know you and people want to cheer you on. You know, you should definitely work with people who are cheering you on, not the people who are putting up the roadblocks and trying to trip you up at every turn. You know, yeah. get those people out of your way. <laughs> exactly. Choose wisely. Absolutely. And, uh, and the, you know, the, maybe the group you've surrounded yourself isn't the group that's going to propel you forward. So you, know, you always have to ask us. Well, listen, Diane, this has been fantastic. All of Diane's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm an executive producer with two TV shows, a radio show and a podcast, best-selling author and speaker and nonprofit founder in visual performing and digital arts. And I work with mainstream through special needs. Hashtag JDS family. You'll find me all over the internet. Yeah, fantastic. Well, listen, Diane, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.